Okay, more about my addiction, guys. No, seriously, I'm an addict. And I think all of us are addicts. I mean, don't you hate it when you can't find your phone and you have to ask your friend to call it? I mean, very likely the last thing you did last night was check your phone. And when you got up this morning, you checked your phone. I mean, we walk and text, we drive and text. And you know, when you're in a social situation and you have to run to the bathroom to check your update? <laughs> or you're standing on the corner and you're looking at your phone and you actually have no idea why you're looking at it and what you're doing with it? And then you know the thing when you put that picture up on your social feed and the likes come in and it feels good. It feels really good. And then when you put that post and you get no likes and you start having that conversation in your head, you're like, whoa, what is happening here? Nobody likes me. There's this famous experiment that I'm sure you all know about. It's the B.J. Skinner rat experiment. You know, the first rat hit the lever and it got nothing. And the second rat hit the lever and got a lot of food. And the third rat would hit the lever and sometimes it would get something. Sometimes it would get nothing. Sometimes it would get a lot. And sometimes nothing. And that principle of variable rewards, it really got hooked on that. Because if it kept on staying by the lever, it would maybe get some food. But if it didn't, it knew it would get nothing. So it just hung out by the lever. <laughs> and that's behavior design. That's that dopamine rush you get that makes you feel really, really good. And behavior design is the science that all tech companies engage with when they design apps and digital ecosystems. They get psychiatrists, psychologists, behavior economists into the room, and as the programmers design, they have conversations and really unpack what those behaviors are. And that's why sometimes, you know, you're with your phone and you don't even realize it, like it's in our subconscious. And Eric Pickskill here, the artist from Chicago, did this whole series of photos called Removed. And what he did was take pictures of people in their normal day-to-day -day life and pull the phones out. And as Cheryl Turkle says from MIT, we are alone together. We're physically in the bed, but we're actually not there mentally or consciously. And the weird thing is, we point the finger at the kids. Now let's be honest, the first time an infant's going to interact with a digital device is watching a parent or an adult interact with a digital device. And what does it feel like when you're in a pram and you look up at your parent and all you get is a blank expression on their face because they're buried in their feed? Or you're that kid that comes back from a day at school and you sit at the table and your parents are emailing? and the conversation seems not to be heard. Mary Aiken says that we're asking the wrong questions in her book, The Cyber Effect. We should be asking, when is it a good time to give an infant a digital device? The question we should be asking, when is it appropriate for an adult to interact with a digital device in front of an infant? And behavior design is no better explained or showcased than in Snapchat. You know, Snapchat, you snap and it goes on there for about 24 hours and it disappears. Well, they decided that wasn't really good because people weren't really coming back and they wanted to make sure they came back for more. So what they did is they came up with streak. If I snap a streak and you respond, an emoji comes up of a flame. And if we continue over 24, 48, 72, and we keep on going, that flame is there. And then there's a number by it to give you an idea of how many back and forths you have. The minute one of us stops, the flame disappears, and the hourglass comes. And it ticks, ticks, until one of you doesn't snap, 
and everything disappears. When you're an adolescent and a kid, and you measure many of your social interactions by social media, and your social capital is kind of built around that, mm -hmm. the consequences when you're going through puberty are kind of hard and sobering. The reality is, I'm not against these devices, in no way. Like you in this room, we've been doing this for many years. I've been an IT director, I've worked in international schools, and I've really tried to celebrate the seamlessness and the frictionless of these devices. But if every single thing that we do, our health app, our heartbeat, our sleep patterns, our shopping, our GPS, our airline bookings, our search, are collected, aggregated, analyzed to feed that behavior design, we as educators have an explicit responsibility to be far more skeptical about this narrative. To stuff digital, digital citizenship 10 minutes on a Friday advisory <laughs> is just not enough. We have to be courageous enough as education leaders and teachers to make this part of our curriculum, our live curriculum. The, com the complexity and consequences of digital design have to be our curriculum. Do we all want to be puppets pulled by strings of our digital ecosystems that we don't control? The fact is, Schools are very likely the last place where kids interact with devices where there is balance and pedagogic purpose. And we can't take that for granted. If we ignore behavior design, we're all going to lose something, our free will. And I and you do not want to lose that. Thank you.